love a good pantry. I love a good stockpile pantry that I know has all of the things that I need to feed my family. Regardless of what's going on in the world and regardless of what's happening in our lives, I know that there's things in my pantry that I can make from scratch to feed my family. Learning from my grandmother, the things that I should always have in my pantry has kind of been a staple in my life. I love the idea of having food handy so I can feed my family, even my extended family, if I ever need to. If the prices keep going up and we for some reason cannot afford bread, bread is going up to $5 a loaf. That's $5 for a generic store brand loaf of honey wheat bread. To me, that's crazy. So having staples in my pantry makes sense to me. These are the things that I have learned from my grandmother. Because she grew up in the depression, she taught me the things that they would keep on hand so they could eat. There were tough times and a lot of people suffered, but there are lessons that we can learn from this. So here are my 15 depression era pantry staples. Number one, flour. Flour is essential for so many things. All baked goods, including bread, come from flour. That's one of the things that we need. It's always nice to at least once a week have something sweet, a pie crust, cookies, banana bread, whatever you might want. Flour is the root of all things that are yummy. Number two, yeast. Yeast is essential for the bread. I'm telling you, I truly believe that bread is going to be out of control before we know it. Having flour and yeast on hand to make bread is a smart decision. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate you being here. If you're enjoying today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you're having so much fun, please hit that bell so YouTube can notify you when new videos come out. Number three, sugar. Where would we be without sugar? How would we make that banana bread and those cookies without sugar? Sugar provides us with not only the desserts, but also, let's go back to the bread for a second. You need sugar and water and yeast for the bread. Sugar is added to almost everything these days. So it's really hard to imagine a time when maybe it was scarce. That's actually what happened to the Great Depression. Not only was it hard to find, but when they did get it, it was used in a bartering system. It was often traded for things like coffee and flour. Sugar was also used for medicinal purposes. It was believed to be good for things like scratchy or sore throats and to help with colds and coughs. Also, we all know a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, right? Another thing, sugar was actually used to create alcohol, which could then be used as a bartering item. Number four, something else fantastic to have on hand is cornmeal. Cornmeal can come in handy for so many things, including English muffins and regular corn muffins too. Cornbread is another staple. You can make it sweet or savory, which is kind of nice. It's a nice addition to soups and stews. Number five, oil. Oil is important for cooking and baking, as well as skin care. I mean, coconut oil is great for your skin. Oil is an essential in your pantry. Of course, you can use oil to cook with, but it can also have other purposes around the house. It can be used to fix a squeaky hinge or to lubricate your windows to make soap as well as use for oil lamps. During the Great Depression, many people used whatever they could for oil, including, of course, the standard typical bacon grease. Number six, baking soda, baking powder. Those leavening agents work really well in cooking and also baking soda is an incredibly great cleaning agent. You need to scrub your tub or your sink baking soda. Number seven, dried fruit. Dried fruit is a fantastic addition to anything that you might need to make. It's also really great in things like oatmeal, 
or for a small snack if you need a little bit of a sweet treat. Dried fruit was pretty popular during the Great Depression. Things like apples, pears, and peaches were pretty common. They actually used to make their own by slicing the fruits super thin and then putting them out in the sun to dry or on a low oven. Even a wood stove would work for this. Once dried, the fruit can be stored in jars or bags and last for four months to come. These days it's pretty easy to find dried fruits, but it can be kind of expensive. So consider making your own. Again, lots of recipes online and on YouTube, you can learn to dry your own fruit, even if you don't have a dehydrator. If you find the fruits on sale, it might be a lot more cost effective to dry your own. And these dried fruits are great additions to things like granola or trail mix, as well, of course, as oatmeal. Number eight, canned fruits and vegetables. These things are inexpensive. They store well and they last a long time. Personally, I'd rather go with frozen but it's always nice to have specific canned vegetables and canned fruit on hand if needed. Canned fruits make a great addition to oatmeal or pancakes. In addition to the canned vegetables, I'm gonna throw in some canned beans here too. Canned beans are an excellent form of protein. You can get them dried. If you wanna be super frugal, that's a better way to go. But having canned beans on hand to add to soups, stews, casseroles, and even a side dish is an inexpensive way to stretch a meal and get a little more protein. Number nine, oatmeal. Not only is oatmeal great for breakfast, it can also be used as a filler in meats to stretch meats and can also be used in breads. Number 10, spices, including salt. Salt can make anything better. It's amazing to me how a little bit of salt in a very bland soup can make it so much better. Salt was particularly important because it was used in preservation of food. Without refrigeration, salt was the best way to keep meat and other foods from going bad. Salt was also an excellent bartering tool. Spices are an inexpensive way to make a meal taste good. They're not very expensive. You can get them at Aldi, Walmart, even the Dollar Tree has spices at a pretty decent price. Number 11, potatoes. Adding potatoes to any kind of meal can really stretch that meal. Mash them, bake them, boil them, fry them. Doesn't make any difference. Add spices to them, turn them into a casserole, turn them into potato pancakes, turn them into potato bread. Everything's going back to bread, I'm telling you. It's versatile, it's inexpensive, and it really can stretch a meal. Number 12, pasta. Pasta is also one of those fillers that can stretch a meal. You can take one grilled chicken breast, a pound of spaghetti, and some sauce and really stretch a meal to feed a large family. Of course, making spaghetti and meatballs is an excellent way to use a pasta. If you have all of the ingredients for the meatballs, which are pretty inexpensive if you can get the ground beef on sale, you can have a nice, balanced, fulfilled meal. Another great use for pasta is, of course, macaroni and cheese. This is definitely one of our family's favorites. My youngest son might actually be a little obsessed with macaroni and cheese. You can even add into that macaroni and cheese any leftover meat that you might have. Chicken, ham, some people even put diced up hot dogs or kielbasa in it. It's one of those things that's inexpensive and can last longer in your pantry. If you're looking for tools to help you meal plan, I'm gonna leave a link below to my free meal planning toolbox so you can make meal planning a little bit easier for your family. Number 13, canned meat. Now I'm not just talking spam here, I'm talking about tuna, chicken, and even canned beef. Now I know canned beef is a little bit difficult to find. You can find things like canned chili, which includes beef in a can, but tuna and canned chicken are very versatile. Not only can you make chicken salad and tuna salad sandwiches, but you can also incorporate those into other dishes, like a macaroni salad with chicken in it, or a tuna noodle casserole as well. Very versatile, great form of protein. There were many brands of canned meat available. Spam was by far the most popular. It was introduced in 1937 and became a staple during World War II when it was included in soldiers' rations. 
After the war, it remained popular because it was cheap and easy to find. A good thing about canned meat is you can add it to other things, including some vegetables, and stretch it to make a meal without spending a whole lot of money. Number 14, other grains, including rice, barley, and quinoa. They're very inexpensive and they make a great filler. You can use them as a side dish or you can use them as a base for a casserole or soup. You can add anything to them to make them a little bit more exciting. And number 15, nuts and nut butters. An incredibly great source of protein and tasty too. Add peanut butter to a piece of homemade bread, again with the bread, and you got a very nice little lunch comfort foods, right? I'm a huge lover of peanut butter myself, so much that might be a problem, but adding nuts and nut butter to your pantry will give you an alternate source of protein. Nuts and nut butters are a great source of protein and healthy fats, both of which are essential during times of stress and hardship. They can be used in sweet and savory dishes as well as on their own as a healthy snack. If you're creative and want to do some research, it's actually much more cost effective to make your own nut butters. It simply just needs a nice powerful blender, some nuts, and water for soaking. This is a great way to get some healthy fats without added preservatives for a fraction of store-bought costs. Okay, there's my 15 things to add to a depression era pantry in order to save money on your grocery bills. Thanks so much everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.